What's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel here. Uh, usually I film an intro for this kind of stuff when we're at the track, but uh, to be honest, it just slipped my mind and I did not film an intro to this video, so uh, we're doing it all right now. So we are at the Mopar uh, London race. I believe it's called the Mopar Muscle Event. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's a great race uh, down there in London. The, the people that own London, they're just super, super awesome. They're Mopar people. So it's always a really good event to go to. If you're a Mopar fan, I recommend definitely catching it next year. Uh, but we took my truck and my dad's car down there. In this video, we're just going to talk about my dad's car uh, and the really, really successful weekend that we had with it. So uh, to start off, we're going to do this video a little bit differently than we do most of them. Usually I talk between every pass, but we changed so little on the car over the whole weekend uh, that there's just no reason to talk between every pass. So the uh, just recapping where we left off on the last video to get you back up to speed, is we loosen the compression on the rear shocks full loose uh, to try to make it feel like it had a lighter spring in it, make it think it had a lighter spring. Uh, and then basically that's the only change that we made to the car uh, moving into the first uh, test session, I guess you could say. There was a, a test and tune opportunity on Friday uh, for the beginning part of the day. And then the second part of the night was a gambler's race. So uh, we made four runs during the test and tune. So let's check out how we did there. So I lied, I'm gonna interrupt between the first and second run here. So on that first run, uh, 00 Dave was super stoked. Uh, he was very happy to see the car uh, working like that and he didn't wanna change anything on it. And I just asked him if we could raise the launch RPM from 4,000 to 4,500, something that I had been wanting to try a lot. Uh, and you know, he, he agreed and he said, if you're gonna do it now, let's do it now. So uh, for the next one, I raised the launch RPM for 4,500 and it stayed there the rest of the whole weekend. So that was the conclusion of the test and tune session. Uh, we got to make four runs and they were all four really good runs. Uh, to be totally honest, I don't remember exactly what the ETs were. I uh, basically didn't uh, do much note taking uh, this weekend because we really didn't change anything other than those two changes that we just talked about. Uh, but 
the the best the car did all weekend was a 6.10, and that, uh, or, or I'm sorry, it, it ran a 6.08. But uh, 6.10 was usually the, the best that it, that it would run. Uh, and then uh, 6.15 to 13, depending on the air as the weekend went on. And uh, this, this track is at a natural higher elevation than most of the tracks that we run on. Uh, so same air quality for same air quality. This is gonna have a little bit worse air. So uh, it's always a couple numbers slow when you're comparing to some of the sea level tracks that we run on usually. But basically, uh, we go into the gambler's race with a lot of confidence, uh, really happy with the way that the car is working, and we feel like for the first time in a long time, we have a very raceable car. Uh, the way that a gambler's race normally works is usually uh, there's a set buy-in amount, which is usually 50 bucks or so, and then it's uh, typically a winner-take-all deal. Uh, this gambler's race was a little different because the owners of the track pitched some money in on it too so that way they could pay back a couple rounds. So I believe it paid all the way back to the quarterfinals. Uh, but it's a nice, basically, you know, a, a good little race to kick the weekend off. So we go into that and let's see how we did.
So that last run you saw there was the finals of the, the bracket one that we call it uh, top ET uh, box class. Uh, so we actually made it all the way to the finals and then uh, you had a little red light, threw it away, man. And uh, you know, that happens when, when you're really trying to kill it at these bracket races, and honestly you have to, you gotta be on your game because people are really good in bracket racing nowadays. Um, and sometimes when you're swinging for it every single round, you're gonna come up with a red light every now and then. Unfortunately, it sucks to throw the finals away like that, but uh, it was a really, really great first night for us. Uh, and then uh, bracket one and bracket two, the box and no box class, they ended up uh, running off for some additional money. But so first night, really good. We made it all the way to the finals. Uh, first time actually in a long time that that car has, has even been to the finals. It's, it's been a couple years. So uh, we're going into Saturday, feeling really, really well, feeling really good. Uh, about what the car is is capable of and uh now that my dad feels like he's got a good car under him like he says uh he, he feels really confident so let's move into saturday here and see how we did saturday
Saturday was another good day. Didn't make it quite as far as we did uh, on Friday, but uh, we did make it down to six cars uh, and then got beat. So uh, we actually broke out on, on that run. So the car actually went a little bit too fast for the dial in and uh, we ended up losing the round there, but uh, made it all the way to six cars, which is really awesome. Uh, it's been a long time, like I said, since he's even been to the finals much less going down to you know the the quarterfinals on the very next day um so he's he's just super happy super stoked uh and then i actually ran my truck a little bit on saturday which we will get into uh in another video but uh basically my weekend at this point was about over for me uh, i had plans to be uh traveling home on sunday uh but they were planning on racing uh, again on Sunday, and um, the weather wasn't looking too hot, and so I had made the decision to go ahead and pack up and head home early Sunday morning, uh, and my dad decided to make the decision and stay for uh, the race on Sunday. Even though it wasn't looking like it was probably gonna get in with the, the impending doom of the weather that was over top of us. So uh, the only footage I have from Sunday was this one right here, first round. Another really nice run. Uh, he wins first round. And uh, there wasn't as quite as many cars uh, there on Sunday as there was on Saturday because, you know, several people had to be traveling home, but still a really good field of cars. I want to say there was about 32 cars in the Sunday field. Uh, so anyhow, I went ahead and, uh, you know, my wife and I, we started heading home and my mom is texting us every round and she's sending me uh, white slips. Uh, and usually in, in bracket racing, if you're doing good and you're winning, you get a white ticket. If you're losing, you get a yellow ticket. And she keeps sending me pictures of these white time slips. And uh, he's just, he's, he's going around, he's going around, he's going around. And uh, we live about two, two and a half hours from the track. And uh, by the time we make it home, I get a phone call saying that he won the whole thing. So Sunday, he was able to, to get the deal done. It was a $2,000 to win race. Uh, he's never won a $2,000 to win race before. And uh, he's definitely never had that good of a weekend. I was pretty sad that I wasn't there. I couldn't film any of it. Uh, but really super happy for him to go out there and win. And uh, he had a lot of rounds from, from what it sounded like that he had to earn it. So he did a really good job driving the car and the car did a really good job for him. So uh, I'm proud of the car where we're at with it so far. He's obviously super stoked, got his first big check. I'll throw a picture up of his winner circle here. He's just super over the moon with the car, super happy. I think I have helped revive his love for drag racing again. Uh, so definitely a successful weekend. But as always, uh, I feel like there's still a little bit of a room for improvement. The, the car did some really good things. It went a 128 60 foot Saturday night, uh, which is the best 60 foot that it's ever been. It was a 128 eight, I believe. Uh, and the car was deadly consistent when the when it was in the rounds. When it needed to be consistent, the car was really consistent. Uh, there was a couple little outliers. He made 23 passes on that car this weekend. He's never made that many passes. I don't have 23 runs on my truck yet. <laughs> and he made that many in the weekend. But the 60 foot was between 130 and 131 for 18 of those passes, which is really, really good. Uh, and then there was a couple 129s, and then there was one 132 and one uh, 134 where it actually did spin just a little bit. Uh, but aside from that, the, the 60 foot was ultra consistent. But me being so picky with that car because we've come so far with it and I just want it to be perfect. I'm not happy with those outliers. Uh, I'm not super stoked about a 134. A 132, I'd probably let it go. If it went a 129 once, I'd probably let it go. But 
uh, the fact that it went that 128 and the fact that it went at 134, the, that's just a little bit too much spread for me. I know in science they say you throw the outliers away and then you take your average from the middle, uh, but I want every run to be that 130 to 131. So uh, there's also 80 pounds in the trunk of this car, which I didn't know there was that much. I thought there was like 60 pounds in it, but he's had 80 pounds of ballast in this car the whole year since we've been messing with it. And he told me that once he felt like the car was working, he'd let me take the ballast out of it, uh, which is definitely gonna make the car, I, I won't say not work, because uh, 80 pounds directly over top of the shocks is a lot smaller change than you would think. If you were taking 80 pounds five foot behind the car out, it would be a huge change. Uh, but 80 pounds just directly over, if you think about putting weight on your shoulders, right? If you put 80 pounds on your shoulders, you could probably handle it, you know, you, you could hold it up there. But if you put 80 pounds on a five foot pole, you're not gonna be able to pick that up. So it's not a big change in my opinion, taking the weight out of the car. What it will affect oh, slightly is the spring is already too heavy that's in it. It's too stiff of a spring and taking the weight out is only gonna make that spring a little bit stiffer. So we're going to change the rear springs. Uh, we had 130 pound springs in the car right now. I actually have a set of 125s here, uh, some Hyperco springs that we're gonna put in the car. Uh, so that way it's not a big change, it's, it's a small change, it's only five pounds of spring rate, and they're both 14 inch springs. Um, but I think that that's gonna be enough spring rate change to allow us to take the weight out of the car, and hopefully uh, the car will still work the way that it's working now, and we'll just get 80 pounds out of it so we can pick up a little bit of ET. Um, it's not really a goal of his, it's kind of a goal of mine. I would love to see this car run a 599. I don't know if that's necessarily gonna happen this year, but I believe based on where we're at and what I'm seeing with the numbers, I really think that we can do it if we get this 80 pounds out of it and we get it to go uh, the way that it's been going. I'd like to see it do a 599 once and then whatever from there, we could you know turn it back a little bit if we need to make it ultra consistent, but uh, overall, super awesome weekend for us. Uh, couldn't be happier for him. Super glad that he got a win. It's been a long time, and uh, hopefully that'll keep him racing for some more years to come. So, like always, guys, I appreciate you watching these videos. If you like what I'm putting out there, feel free to subscribe to the channel. That's the easiest way for you to stay notified every time I make a new video. Uh, hit that like button for me if you want to, and like always, we will see you next time.